Hey everybody, my name is Chris Sarda, Chaos and Comics, at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter. It has been nearly a month since I put a video out. Um, I've been on Bruce and Stephanie's channel, winning non-stop at trivia until I lost. I did expect to lose sooner, um, but really only one person really was able to do it. So uh, anyway, I ended up losing at the end. And, uh, and I think that's probably why I haven't put in any videos. So this is a quick lightning review. Um, it's not necessarily new comics. It's just this stack of comics that I have sitting right here that uh, I decided I want to talk about. So first up is Rise of the Tyrant number one. I have all of these. It took me a while to find number one because when I subscribed to it, um, the my comic shop, I guess I just did it too late and it started with number two. So I ended up just buying like a single issue on eBay and paying the shipping. So it's more expensive than the $3.99, unfortunately. Um, but Massimo Rossi is a uh, is a pretty prolific, even though he's not famous yet, Spanish writer. And Amigo is actually a Spanish company, I've learned, that does comics in English. Uh, this book is really cool. Uh, it's an interesting contrast to Kaiju Max because that's sort of a comedy and really about prison and, and crime in America, where this is a, a legit um, kaiju book, which there aren't that many as far as uh, as far as comic books go. And it isn't the typical one either. It's a more science fiction based, this little thing that's basically partly Venom, partly that gem from the Black Eagle, and uh, partly Godzilla because of how big it is, uh, comes crashing in. There's a pandemic. It's a giant monster. And uh, this is sort of an introductory book, so you don't get the big monster fights. But you you do learn that there's a robot. And uh, and it, it looks really awesome. The first issue was really good uh, as far as um, uh, as far as this kind of comic goes. And uh, the art really fit, and, and I enjoyed it a lot. And it's a sh on a shiny piece of thing, a shiny comic, or sh on a sh shiny cover, a glossy cover. So I have two, three, and four, and I've had them for a long time. I just barely got number one, so I so I uh, finally read it. So, Sideblade She, uh, I bought these on eBay. This is the variant cover. I bought the regular one. Uh, I've owned the first appearance of Witchblade in the past. Hey, there's Witchblade. How are you doing, Witchblade? Um, but uh, uh, I didn't anymore, and I have She Sideblade, which is part two of this two-issue series, and I haven't read that. But I did read this. Witchblade shows up. Um, Sort of corny, but the book is fun. I actually like the Sideblade She book. I guess that's pulp for me. I guess it's really where my childhood was. Um, I just I, I I agree that it's silly and stupid. The you know Cyblade and Cyberforce and whatnot, but I think that the art is better, and I think that it, um, you know, I think the stories are just as stupid, but at least they can write sentences compared to like reading something like the First Secret War. Which was, which is almost unreadable. It's just silly, like taking that seriously. Um, not that I take this seriously either, but at least the sentences are not corny. Um, and I, I think a lot of that has to do with age. That's like my, the '90s were the time where I was a uh, a preteen reading comics and whatnot. Um, no one's Rose by Vault Comics. This is uh, by normally I'm used to seeing. Um, Zach Thompson and uh, I forgot the first name Nadler. This is uh, Zach Thompson and Emily Horn, drawn by Alberto Abercrombie. The art in here is beautiful. Um, the The book there's nothing wrong with the story, but it's that typical, like almost Alita high level that I've reviewed a bunch kind of story where uh, there's people on the bottom level and we got to get to the top level. This one has a lot more focus though on um on like uh, environmental issues and stuff like that so it, it does have um i didn't want to call that a political stance but it's a it's it's an environmentally focused uh, uh book um but i enjoyed it i'll probably go ahead and read or wait for the trade like i'm trying to do a lot of these um beautiful art beautiful design what i will say is that they do get to love they do get to the higher level right away uh, which is which is not normal for this kind of book where it's some future dystopia. Um, I've started enjoying design. I guess Hickman's done that to me. So when I see like uh, designed pages and stuff, 
uh, I've started counting that as as my enjoyment in comic books, which is interesting enough. Um, this is older, came from the dollar bins. I just finally read it. I'll probably just put it up for sale for a dollar. Uh, Sub Zero, it's an older comic by Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti. I have to admit, I didn't really enjoy this that much. It's just a girl that wants to be a superhero. She's trying to set up her, um, you know, she's trying to set up her origin story. She pays a homeless guy to go mug her parents and. Then the homeless guy just says it, says that that's what she tried to do. So um, it was what it was. Uh, let's see. Next up, I, I meant to only buy issue number two, but, you know, pandemic and being excited for new comics, I went ahead and, or issue number one, I went ahead and bought Decoro number two. And it's even better. And it's even weirder. And, um, I, you know, I have no idea what Hickman's doing. You almost have to finish what Hickman's doing to decide if you like it or not. But I'm on board with him. But man, Mark Huddleston is is amazing. Um, I think that it's a. I think that you or Mike Huddle, Huddleston. I'm sorry, Mike Huddleston. I even bought something just off Comicsology, one of his other works. I wasn't very familiar with him, um, and I thought, you know, how could he be this good and me not know anything about him? And I thought, man, what you know, he must have been in something I've read or something I should have read, and, and you know, I looked him up and it wasn't. You know, there wasn't too much. So I bought some Butch, I think it's called Butch Baker or something like that. I'm just curious how he draws otherwise. I think what this book can contrast with art-wise is Strange Adventures, um, the Tom King book with uh, Mitch Gerards and um, uh, the other artists slip in my name, slip in my mind right now. But there are two distinct styles in that book. And the trick is, you know, Tom King used is using two different artists for, for a different time period and place. This has three distinct styles, but it's all Huddleston. I mean, distinct styles too, like like a, just a different path altogether. This weird black and white, this outside of time sort of storyline going on here. And then, uh, um, that's so cool. It just looks so cool. It's just such a beautiful book. The whole design, everything about it. Um, uh, of course, it's... Uh, it's uh, Hickman from the last two two years or so, so um, white pages. He enjoys a bigger book, and then you jump to this what the solicit basically made the book sound like a very polite uh, contract killer, um, and then in the same in the same vein, you get another feel for it or another a another art style, um, not a huge departure, but still a departure. Uh, so, man, I love what's going on here. I think it's incredible. Um, and then this is not a huge departure from that first chapter, um, but now more, in more color, more vibrant and stuff. So really hard to know, figure out what's going on, which is fine. I mean, despite not really knowing what's going on, the both the books have been very entertaining to me. Um, you know, this I had to post this on Instagram because as weird as it is, uh, issue three is when things get weird. So, um, you know, as much as I enjoy reading these in, in floppies, I think I do want to wait for the trade, but I don't know. I wish I could just buy, you know, like TKO, the way they sell their books, you get like a, uh, you get like a, not a dust jacket, but a book cover. I, I can't even think of the word, a slip case, a slip case. I think that's how they should make trades, to be honest. So we get the covers and you don't lose out on you don't lose down on big spreads, um, you know, like this, this you would lose, I think you would lose something uh, looking at this in a trade. Do you agree? I agree. I agree with myself. Um, next up are the most recent X books. This is more Hickman World, even though neither are written by Hickman, Teeny Howard and Ed Brisson. Um, I like both these books. I think they're definitely, this is like a throwback to the weird, um, New Mutants covers, like the first 20 issues or something, which I think are real awesome. The last couple of New Mutants have been, um, you know, have had just really strange covers. Uh, these are probably the, the books at the bottom of my list if I had to rank uh, the new X-Men books. But um, nonetheless, I still like them a lot. Like, if they're just not compared to X-Force, not compared to X-Men. And, you know, too early to say for Wolverine and Cable and, and, and even Hellions and stuff. Um, at least the initial ones. But I, I really have fun with this book. I mean, the the kids running out, you know, fighting some nightmare 
kid nightmare mutant and getting stuck there's just so many young mutants you, it's hard to even say who the new mutants are i do hope i do wish they they delve into the i forget what they call it the second or I forget what they call it but there's a bunch of groups of, of of young mutants and i'd like to see generation x a little bit more even though there seems to be a lot of crossover and uh you know people supposedly don't like this uh, i do we're into the reality changing it's good because the solicit really threw me off like going to war with britain like that should be like an event right um, but there's some reality warping from, um, uh, uh, Betty, I can't remember her last name, but from Psylocke, who's not Psylocke anymore, brother. So, uh, I enjoy the books. Uh, they're nothing great, but I'm, like I've said before, I've tried to cut X-Men and I just don't think I will. I just think I like it. You know, I just, I'm on board with it. Uh, next up, this one's new. This is, uh. Adventure Man, Matt Fraction, and Terry Dodson, and Rachel Dodson on inks. Um, the book is beautiful. It's some of the best art I've seen uh, the Dodsons do together. And um, I, I think that's really important to say for me because I, you know, the Terry Dodson and Rachel Dodson, I'd always been on like, oh, I like them, but, you know, I, I think it's just not for me, you know. And, uh, you know, I guess Fantastic Four and X-Men is a – example of that like it's actually nice looking it's there's nothing I, i'll just open to something random you know but it somehow felt a little bit cartoony and it you know maybe not as finished um maybe maybe like oh there could have been more detail or, or something even though there's plenty looks like a lot of color and detail there to me um uh this camera's really bright you gotta figure out what's going on there or my lighting uh, what's interesting at the end of Adventure Man and Matt Fraction's note, um, I guess they worked together in X Men more than a decade ago, and um, you know he mentions Fraction men mentions how terrible it is to be on that corporate deadline. You got to churn it out, churn it out. So it turns out Terry Dodson can only draw so much when he has time. I mean, this is, and I don't, I don't claim to know Terry Dodson very well or the Dodsons in general. Um, but this is to me is peak Terry Dotson. This book is really beautiful. Um, the colors too, very like washed down, you know, it's supposed to have a, that pulp feeling. Um, it's another one of those books where it's two halves, you know, the first half is very diff different than the second half and who, who knows where it goes. Um, as far as the, you know, as far as a, a book like this, especially when it's written in sort of an ironic way, um, like the beginning of Adventure Man is, and then it comes back, you know, down to earth down to uh, real time and there'll be some, you know, jumping into a storybook sort of never ending story, except pulp kind of thing going on as, as, as best I can tell from the first issue is that it's a, you know, writing the, that pulp ir ironic and stuff, you know, it's like a, a little bit of Alan Moore worship in my mind. Um, you know, whether I stay with this book, I'm not sure, uh, you know, tra image trades are, are so cheap. Uh, for volume one and I did enjoy it and I loved the art. I mean, this probably, this is nearly the best art in the stack. And I don't think I've ever thought that about the Dodsons. Um, I mean, not of any fault of their own. I just haven't read a lot of them. And when I have, it's been on those corporate books. So, um, uh, so, so mixed feelings about it because it, it didn't feel that original, um, but it did feel like everyone was having fun and that was joyous. And I, and I think that's the point. I don't think I'm supposed to come in here and be like, this is original and it will. It will influence the uh, the rest of Comicdom for the rest of history. I think Fraction and the Dotsons and and Cowles were having fun. So um, this one I definitely won't be buying number two. I did enjoy it and like it. I probably will pick up volume one of the trade. Um, I read these a while ago, uh, but you know I got them later. I got them just before the pandemic started from the online store. This is Darth Vader one and two. Greg Pak, who. Uh, if, you know, a lot of people say Greg Pox hit or miss, and I think that's true. Um, but I think he's hit or miss because he's so prolific. Uh, he's actually a very good, uh, writer in my opinion. Um, but when you write a lot of stuff, you know, you could be hit or miss for people, I think. Um, but I think he hits on Darth Vader and does, does the thing that I love, even though I haven't read the book, it, it, it touches a little bit more on another piece, another media form that is in within the Star Wars continuity, if that makes any sense. 
So, you know, there, everything references the, the films because the, the films sort of uh, connect everything, right? But it, sometimes it feels like the comics stay within the comics and the cartoons stay within the cartoons and the books stay within their individual book worlds just in case they need to say something's not canon or something like it's almost, you know, a fear. But uh, in this book, we get some uh, Queen's Gambit characters, which I haven't read those books, but um, I am familiar with some of the characters and like what it's about and whatnot. And that's what happens in these books. And uh, I thought that was really cool. And of course, all the Star Wars books are now taking place in between episodes uh, uh, four and five, where generally um, Star Wars lore from the original series took place between episodes three and four. So no Han Solo, I say that a lot in the Star Wars book and this book, but it's for the best. It's really awesome. And it, they get to focus more on Lando. Hey, so I read the first appearance of Witchblade, and then I read Witchblade number one. Um, Witchblade's drawn way better here. Uh, I, I I realized that uh, Brian Haberlin is is writing this, and um, and also I think through Spawn or something like that, and also does Sonata, which I'll talk about in a second here. Um, but yeah, so this is older. Uh, you know, I'm going to start the the whole Witchblade and Darkness. I'm going to reread those. I, I buy them when I find them for a buck. Of course, this was a little bit more than a dollar. I didn't have the first appearance anymore. So, or the first appearance was like 10 and this was like eight or something like that. Um, but man, so what's interesting about this is I've read a lot of Witchblade and um, this first issue really does sexualize her. But uh, I would say that Sarah Pazzini, the first bearer of the Witchblade in the comics at least, is, uh, is a little bit different than that 90s generic bad girl. Um, not in this issue, though. She's definitely that in this issue. Uh, but she she grows into something more. But I've just always loved the darkness. And and then I loved Witchblade a little bit less. I mean, my stepmom collected Witchblade when I was younger, which was pretty cool. I got them into comics. But I, I went the darkness route. Um, but uh, I, I really like this book. I thought it was I thought it was awesome. I thought it was just fun i guess it's i guess it's what pulp is to me um sort of and you know i enjoy this kind of fantasy science fiction i think a little bit more than superhero stuff but i always read the superhero stuff and i, and I enjoy it so what can you do i'm uh with sleepy readers watching this i'm at i'm still at working on scoff level for superheroes um not that he does that that's a comment i made somewhere else um so nada Number 10. I can't believe we're at number 10. Man, David Hine and Brian Haberlin must have a following that I didn't know about. Um, the cover is very different. I, sometimes I wonder if I got the... I wonder if I got the... Um, the variant cover, because this is very different from other Sonata co covers. Uh, but I love this book. This is a top three book right now. You get 10 issues in. You've, um, you're deep in more into the lore. Um, and, uh, and at this point... You know, if it ends at 12, which it might, I'll be happy. You know, if it continues on, I'll be even happier because there's a lot uh, a lot to see here. Um, great cliffhanger at the end, great art. Uh, the relationships are building really well. Um, there's nothing about this issue necessarily that um, is like you need to go read the whole the other nine if you haven't. It's just that I really enjoyed this book. It's just another, you know, mark up from it, another thumbs up of something I, I liked and enjoyed. Almost done here. Let's get to this one. This one comes from the library. This is the interview by uh, Manuela Fior. And uh, I was going to do, I still might do its own review, but um, you know, it is definitely one of those snooty type fantagraphic books. Um, has a weird, a weird tone and it's in black and white. It almost feels like sometimes like the pencils are being rubbed and whatnot. Um, I, I'd like to talk about this a lot more. So I think I'm gonna. It's gonna get its its own review. Um, not necessarily that it's better than any of this stack, but um, you know we're trying to we're trying to you know we're trying to keep this channel the C-span of the comic community. And just uh, three more books, two more stories. Dark Agnes one and two. So she was in um, the Serpent Crown, Conan Serpent Crown, along with Moon Knight and another uh, Robert E. Howard character. They've decided to give her a her own series, her own mini series at least, um, by uh, not Betty Clunan, I forgot your name, Becky Clunan and uh, Luca Pizzari. 
So um, overall, a good book. I think mostly what I like about it is the the uh, the French setting. So sort of like feels like Napoleonic times, but I actually don't know. I think it might be earlier than that. It's it is much earlier than Napoleonic times. So um, uh, a pretty basic story so far in the first two issues, but then very entertaining. And Luca uh, Pizzari actually is uh, very good. Um, you know, especially with a uh, with big uh, big splash pages. So I thought that was I thought some of this art was very good. So uh, to be honest, I think this is the kind of thing that you'll find in dollar bin. So I wouldn't say run out and get it, but if you see it for cheap, you know, and you need something to read, it's definitely worth it. Uh, I liked it. It is very different from those uh, Conan books like um, the Belit series, and I forget what the other I forget Valeria. So it's very different from that. So just because it's a girl doesn't mean it's going to look anything like that. Uh, Pizarri is really good with these. This is like some kind of um, drug-induced dream. So he's uh, really good with those pages there. And um, yeah, story solid. At this point in these two issues, it just feels like, you know, they're for hire, sort of um, not assassins, but you know, I don't know. You don't know because I didn't explain it very well. And hey, this is a book I was only going to buy issue number one and then go to the trade. And now I bought a full arc. So I won't buy issue number seven. I'm going to try really hard not to buy issue number seven. But um, I really do. I really do love this book. Um, Kevin Coley's art, uh, you know, it's it's good. It fits the story. Uh, you know, I, for me, sometimes he's hit or miss and not because he's, he's not a good artist, just because, um, you know, sometimes I think about the way uh, some of these the way like some other artists might might draw this stuff um but you but from uh you know soul and snyder the you know the concept and and probably like the written design it's hard to explain right because i think that they probably had an idea of how some of these characters should look and kevin coley um you know came up with designs if i had to guess the way it worked but um the book is great and i think that the and even though the the story is you know, a lot more easier to follow than you know Hickman's last two indie books, uh, I'm talking about East to West, and then of course Decorum. Um, I, it still feels like we've just scratched the surface. Now that you sort of understand that they're going to walk the spiral, and that there's different levels of the spiral and whatnot, um, you know, you you realize that they you could be taken anywhere on this sort of pseudo fantasy, pseudo science fiction um story that they're taking us along on so the you know just scratching the surface that's how it feels uh i i do hope that it continues on but if they're already writing scripts for a tv show and whatnot then it looks like it is anyway that is my stack um i actually have another stack i could do another stack right now if i wanted but i'm not going to anyway guys thank you for watching my name is uh chris you can find me again at instagram or at Kazakh Comics on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, let me know what you think down there in the comments. See you guys later.